for her mastery of style and writing, exploring the culture around us and exposing the depths of sorrow. Miss Didion has produced works of startling honesty and fierce intellect, rendered personal stories universal, and illuminated the seemingly peripheral details that are central to our lives. see enough and write it down, I tell myself. And then some morning when the world seems strained of wonder someday when I'm only going through the motions of doing what I am supposed to do, which is write. On that bankrupt morning, I will simply open my notebook and there it will all be a forgotten account with accumulated interest paid passage back to the world out there. It all comes back. Remember what it is to be me. That is always the point. Very pleased to have her join us now, especially at this time. Welcome. Thank you. I should say that after Henry, we'll come back to that. This obviously, I assume, is a, is a, from the Central that Park was and the Jogger. That from the Central Park piece, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dominic Nabokov took that picture in Central Park. Yeah. How? I don't, I've never known. <laughs> Henry Robbins was my first, well, he, he, was, he was a book editor who was kind of famous at, yeah. in New York. I mean, he, was, he, he, he kind of brought people up. Uh, he. He encouraged writers who had never written a book before, or in my case, written one book, kind of alone by myself at night. And suddenly there was Henry saying, you can, you can do this. And he, he developed a whole kind of generation of, of, of writers at that time. Uh, and he was just... He was just great. He was a. You met him when first? In, in, I met him in '66. And at that time, your career wasn't blazing, was no, it? No, I'd written a novel that nobody read. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and when you lo when you looked at your income, I mean, you weren't making I a lot of money from writing. Well, nothing. And I, he made you believe in I yourself. Wasn't making money from anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like and, and he made you believe in yourself. Uh, yes, he yeah. made me feel wonderful. And he did this for everybody who was. Who, he made this for all of his writers. Mm -hmm. And but then he, he was had, 51 years old. He died. He just fell, fell dead at a 14th Street subway. Subway. Yeah. One yeah. hot summer morning on his way to work. Yeah. yeah. And then somebody called you up right away. Yeah. And, I can and, remember sitting just just ho holding my knees. I mean, just yeah. it was horrible. But uh, he was he was just an extraordinary editor. Yeah. And you said the person you immediately wanted to talk about, Henry. Henry. His yeah. death was Henry. Henry was the only he person was, to talk to about it, clearly, yeah. yeah. Did he give you, uh, maybe a bad word, self-esteem? Did he make you believe in he yourself? He made you believe in yourself. He never, never ever said, uh, let's do this, why don't you do this, why don't you, uh, what are you going planning to do here, what in the world are you thinking about? He didn't say any of that. He just kind of went his way and, and suddenly at the end of the lunch or the dinner or whatever, you felt as if you could do it yeah. without us ever saying a word. I need a Henry. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> let me let me just talk. Go back a long yeah. time ago to Sacramento Valley, where yeah. you were born, yeah. and and there is a story that when you were five years old, your mother gave you a book, um, a, 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 a copy book, and it's said, big five, Quit. "Big five tablets." Yeah, and called, said. Yeah. Stop whining and start writing, or something yeah, like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop, stop whining. You know, you know. <laughs> children are always bored. Yeah. <laughs> They're always asking you what they, can, what you, what they can do, and she just, just told me to write, just start writing. Mm -hmm. So she recognized even then that maybe you had some instinct that way. I think she just thought right. it was a way to pass the time. <laughs> I mean, well, did you then soon thereafter? I mean, I mean, when was it that you recognized that what you really wanted to do and could do 
was right. Oh, quite soon. As soon as I got into school and uh, and wrote things down, and then people said, they, and and then I, you know, you start getting feedback immediately if you, uh, yeah. can, if it, and yeah, right. so immediately the minute somebody says, "Oh, pretty good," you feel it's, oh, I'll right do it more. again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a name drop. Ted, Ted Williams once told me that the big, great baseball player. I said to him, "Why baseball?" And he said, "Because I, I played it pretty well." And the more people told me I was pretty good, the more I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there is something about positive mm -hmm. reinforcement. Mm -hmm. There is also this story about you before I move to the contemporary subjects, that you would be seen reading Hemingway and taking the sentence structure apart. I did it. I, I, I taught myself how to type. You know, I just, I'm not a touch typist. I just still do it this way. But I taught myself how to type by typing sentences typing out Hemingway sentences over and over yeah. again. Looking for? Just how they worked. Because yeah. they, so, they appeared to be so simple, yeah. but you would come away from a string of them with this overwhelming feeling of, yeah. of whatever he had in mind for you to feel. So, I mean, obviously something was going on in the sentences. Yeah. You, people it, you know what was going on. It, yeah. was, was a with, it was yeah. a withholding. There was a there was withheld information in these sentences, and it had it had to do with a rhythm. I mean, I can't exactly explain. But you it. got it. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, got I mean, the people who write about you say that you have this great. There's a sense of perfectionism about you, Con total control and perfectionism. Well, uh, I, I, I do like control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the L.A that has exploded onto our consciousness. Um, That's, it's been quite a week, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Take me there from through your eyes and through your own powers of observation. Everybody, I haven't been out there this week. Yeah. Everybody, I've ta talked to a lot of people out there this week. Everybody I've talked to who was also there in 65, uh, mm -hmm. we were there in 65. Yeah, Watts. Yeah. Um, says this feels different, this is different. And what the main clear thing that's different is that, is that the Watts riot was contained in, basically in Watts, uh, whereas there really were no, no boundaries in this riot. This was, I mean, it spread in, in, in sporadic ways all over the, mm -hmm. over the city and the county, uh, all, and all over the country. And, uh, you know, sure. Um, so it was, it did feel different. Uh, yeah. Are you surprised? Uh, did, did you, as a longtime resident of Los Angeles, recently moved back to New York City, having been here early on and then gone to New York, are you surprised or did you see that kindling temperature out there, as some might say, I waiting for a match? I wasn't entirely surprised, no. I mean, I wasn't surprised. Uh, I, uh, um, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, by any means, I wouldn't have thought yeah. necessarily that, that this, that this was going to happen this summer, uh, or, or next summer, or any time, but it's always, there's always on the, there's always something on the, on the verge of happening. Um, and this has been a very charged issue, the, I mean, the whole, the whole. Yeah. Well, in this book, you believe, I mean, one of some of the essays and some of the things you've been writing about, you think the national political parties are disconnected from the people. Mm -hmm. Do you not? I certainly do, yeah. In, in what way? I mean, what do you see as a dissonance? Well, they aren't uh, running on the same, they are kind of, the, 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 the parties are kind of moving along maintaining themselves or itself I mean um, some extent you know people are right when they say there is very little difference between the parties they are they are they are they are consent they are the consensus party you know um, mm -hmm. are seem to me right um, what the extent to which they I mean we see in the, the numbers of people who go out and vote or bother to even register the uh, absence of connection that people feel with. Do you think there's it. a hunger on the part of, of America for something new and that explains in part the Perot phenomenon? Oh, I think so. I think that, yeah, I think there's a big, 
uh, yearning toward toward some more kind of I, I don't know what uh, um, I, mean, I don't know what how t is it more democratic you think no I think it's less yeah that's what interests yeah. me and how so uh, well I think that if you are yearning for leadership I don't think that's a necessarily tends toward a democratic solution. It's almost like you want a strong, I mean, I get central, nervous. autocratic yeah. figure to I come along and say, I'll take you I get nervous when people talk about leadership, I, uh, uh, you know, when, when anybody talks about needing leadership. Uh, it's, it's almost like they want to they abrogate their responsibility and say to someone else, you, mm -hmm. you make all the decisions because mm -hmm. it's not it's not ours, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're tired of making choices, or we don't like the choices we make, or we don't think it's working the way it is, so you. Mm -hmm. And therefore that plays or into the Or don't want to be responsible for the choices, or what, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, so no, I don't think it's necessarily. Tell me about the central part. I mean, uh, there's so much, uh, this, let me just read this. This is from Insider Baseball. It occurred to me during the summer of 1988 in California and Atlanta and New Orleans, in the course of watching first the California primary and then the Democratic and Republican National Convention, that if it had not that it had not been by accident that the people with whom I had preferred to spend time in high school had, on the whole, hung out in gas stations. I love it. <laughs> that's great. But you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean guys who run for for president tend to have, you know, been in Boys Nation or right. something. <laughs> I mean, right. Boys State. State. Boys yes. State. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's not Boys the kind State of becomes Boys Nation. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. That's right. And you you prefer the guys who hung out at the gas station. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because uh, it, it, it was just a just a preference, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You are. I mean, you say, and help me understand this about you as a as an individual. You know, you pride yourself. It's almost as, 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 not an, as not a thinker, but an observer, as someone who sees in terms of images. The power of seeing the image yeah. is, is the, for the lack of a better word, the gift you have. Well, that's the, yeah, the, 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 the seeing it is what tells it to me. I mean, uh, I, I, I can't possibly think of something I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, Seeing it tells you, defines it for you. Defines it for me, yeah. Um, w you know, w once I see it, then I can, yeah. don't have to see it for too long, <laughs> but... Uh, it, it explains itself by watching. It explains itself, yeah. 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 Okay. I, don't, I don't like to be part of it. I mean, I just like to look at it. Joan Didion after Henry uh, will take a break. When we come back, Joan... Joan will be joined by John, John Gregory Dunn.